All right, I've got a question for you guys to start this one out. Who is your favorite Notion YouTuber? Well, I hope the answer is Productive Dude, right? Well, anyways, did you guys know that you can actually create flashcards in Notion? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you some pretty cool tips that will help you escalate your notes to the next level, both aesthetically and from a usability perspective so that you can actually come back to them and reference them and improve upon them. But tip number one is to use Notion to create flashcards. Let's get into it. So to create flashcards in Notion, you're just gonna wanna start with a blank page. You're gonna hit the slash button and you're gonna type gallery. And you can either use an inline or a full page gallery. Most of the time I use full page, but for this example, I'm gonna use inline. And you can give this a name, so I'm just gonna call it flashcards database. And one of the settings that you'll have to switch right off the bat is this setting in here. So click these three dots, go to properties, change the card preview to none because you don't want the answer showing, do you? Then change the card size to small. If you have more than 50 flashcards, I suggest you change majors, but you can have up to 100 pages on this one page here. So that is pretty nice if you do have a lot of flashcards, but I'm just gonna leave this at 10 for now because I'm not gonna have more than 10. Then we're going to create our questions. So to create your question, all you're gonna do is enter the question here. Who is your favorite? Notion YouTuber. And I'm going to delete this property here. Down here, I would delete all of this content and then I would enter the answer here. And I can make this an H1 by highlighting it and then changing it to H1. So now we have this question and I could make the icon a question mark as well. I could read this and then in my head, I could come up with the answer. So who is your favorite Notion YouTuber? I click, I see the answer here, Productive Dude. Now I could add as many of these as I wanted to. So now I've added a few questions into my flashcards database. And as you can see, I just ask myself, who is your favorite Notion YouTuber? Productive Dude. How close is the earth to the sun? 92 million miles away. How can I learn Notion faster by watching Productive Dude? Now, if you wanna categorize these so that they're easier to sort through, because maybe you don't want your Notion questions conflicting with your astrology questions, all you would do is come into here, add a property, change it to select, and we're gonna call it class. So this might be for whatever class you're taking, and you could have a Notion class, and you could also have an astrology class. So I'm gonna create that, and I'm gonna tag them with their respective class. And then you can come up here, hit filter, add a filter, change it to class is notion. And then we can add another view. Let's just call it astrology. Make sure it's on gallery and create. And we're gonna have to change the settings in here. So properties, card preview, none, card size, small. So we have astrology and I'm going to name this one notion. So now if I click into notion, as you can see, it's filtering for just notion. And if I go into astrology, I can filter this by hitting filter, add filter class is astrology. So now when we're in the astrology tab, we're just going to have our astrology flashcards. How close is the sun to the earth? And if we go to Notion, we're just gonna have our Notion flashcards. For this next tip, I wanted to shout out our sponsor for this video, Glasp.co. And they're going to help you take your note taking to new heights. Glasp is a social web clipper that aims to democratize notes and highlights across the web. It's kind of like Pinterest, but for notes. All you have to do is create an account and install a simple Chrome extension, and then choose some topics that you're interested in and then you're off to the races. By the way, guys, this is a free app. You can browse your feed, you can follow other highlighters and note takers from around the world, and you can even see how many highlights that they've made, and you can kind of get this nice heat map of when they're making their notes. If you find an article that you wanna highlight or take notes on, all you have to do is simply drag your cursor to select text, then it's as simple as choosing a color and adding a note if you'd like. So here I am on my glass feed and I can actually just scroll through here and I can see my highlights, but I can also see highlights of people that I'm following. So if I just click on Kai right here, I can check out his profile and I can see what days he's taken the most notes and I can also see all of his 
notes that he's taken or his highlights that he's taken. So for instance, if I wanted to check out this article right here, the five hour rule, let's click on that. I can see all of his notes here. And if I open the link, it's actually going to open up the article. All I have to do is click on the glass button up here. And then since I haven't made any notes on here, my profile isn't showing any notes. But if I wanted to, for instance, take this right here and make it a highlight, I could just select a color. And then if I wanted to, I could also comment on this by hitting add note so I can add a note to this. So why did the busiest person in the world, former President Barack Obama, need an hour a day while in the office? And I'm just going to add a note here and then hit enter and that will actually save a note related to this highlight. If I scroll further down the page, I can even click on this highlight and it'll pull me right back to it. And if anyone else has made highlights on this Medium article, I can click up here and I can see all of the people that have made highlights. So if I wanted to check out Sydney, I could just see what she highlighted here. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Or if I wanted to check out Kai's highlights, I could do that as well. And as you can see, he even added a page comment here just summarizing the entire article and then he highlighted some special points. Now I'm back on my profile here and I can click on a specific URL and see all of the highlights that I made within that URL. I can also click on these three dots next to a highlight and I can hit share highlight. And that's going to allow me to create this nice image that I can share on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, wherever I wanna share it. So it's kind of nice, you can just hit download or you can share it on Facebook or Twitter with these buttons right here. If I wanted to take this a step further and add this to my Notion database, there's two ways that I can do this. One, I could just click up here where it says copy content on the article that I'm interested in, head back over to Notion and then paste that into my page. And it's just going to pull some things like the featured image and the title of the article and the metadata right here. But then it's also going to show my highlights and notes down here. Then I can just clean this up. Like if I want this URL right here, to just be copied and added to source right here. I could do that. I could move this to the title of the note and then I could get rid of that. And let's just get rid of this metadata now. We could also get rid of this image if we don't want that in there. And then we have highlights and notes right here. And it was as simple as that to just quickly summarize my highlights and notes and send them over to Notion. If you wanna copy just a specific note, you can click in here and you can hit copy highlight. And then if you head back over to Notion, you can simply hit Command V to paste it and it'll paste it in plain text. These images here that you can create with this share highlight button can also be downloaded and added to Notion. So if I wanted to, I could download that, head back over here and I could drag that into my page and then boom, we have a highlighted note from Glass. So if you want to check out GLASP, there will be a link in the first pinned comment of this video as well as in the description. So definitely check them out, make an account. It's free. Sign up, see if you like it and let me know what you think. Now, when it comes to live action, real life, what I tend to do is I tend to fill books up with lots of highlights. As you can see, what I'm going to be showing you next is how to create highlights within Notion and then create a key so that you know what different colors mean. So let's get into it. So here are some notes that I took on Facebook advertising a little while back from Sam Ovens Consulting Accelerator course. And these notes are pretty awesome. They give a pretty good idea of how to run Facebook ads from start to finish. But if I wanted to come in here and highlight something, I could do that just by dragging along the area that I want to highlight and then clicking on this button right here in the toolbar. And if I go down to background, I can change the background color to yellow. Let's say that's important. And maybe I wanted to go purple for something that's a question. Okay, maybe I have a question about something, so it's purple. Now, after I go through and highlight within my notes, I can also go ahead and create a key. And we'll type yellow equals important, purple equals question. And then we could highlight these respectively so that I know exactly what that highlighter color is for. And when I come back and reference this note, I can sift through it a whole lot easier. We could also throw a divider between here if we wanted. So just hit the dash button a couple times or three times and you get that nice divider. When you're reading something, publishers typically utilize columns. So you don't just have a bunch of text that goes straight down a page, but you have columns that separate the text out. So for tip number three, 
I'm going to show you how to create columns in Notion. This is just an example page that I created to show you how to create columns using Notion. Now I'm actually going to show you how to build this so that you can put information in these nice uniform columns. So you're gonna to wanna to start out with a blank page and you're just gonna type in column one. Then hit enter and type column two. Add as many as you want, column three, we could do column four if we wanted to, and you can drag these, okay? So if I go to column two, I can drag this around. So I'm gonna to wanna to drag this over to the right side of column one, and you'll see that little blue line appear. That's perfect, that's exactly what you want. Just let go, and now we have two columns. I can do that with a third as well. Just drag it to the side of column two and a fourth, drag it to the side of column three. You see that little blue line up here. And then you can put information in these columns. Now let's say that I wanted to just have text that goes all the way across again at the bottom of this page. I couldn't do that right now if I just started typing and continuing in this column. But if you wanted to, you could create a whole new section. So to do that, I'm just going to hit enter. And even though I'm in column one still, I'm gonna type new section. And then if you drag that particular text below, you'll see that if you drag it low enough, you'll get a blue line that goes all the way across. So now this is its own section. So all I'd have to do is type something in here. And as you can see, it spans all the way across the page. So now we've got four columns up here and we have a new section below that. And if you don't have enough room to read this, you can also click up in the upper right corner and change this to small text, or you could even go full width, which gives you plenty of space. And we could change this to a serif. So now we're really looking like a published book. Tip number four is to use headings in Notion. It's impossible to separate ideas if you aren't using headings properly. So let's get into it. To create a heading, you can turn something into a heading just by highlighting it and going over to this side here of the toolbar, clicking on that, and you can change it to either a heading one, two, or three. And there are also toggle headings, okay? We have a toggle heading one, two, and three. These are relatively new. So if I wanted to hide information, I could click toggle heading three, and now it's got a nice little bit bigger text here, and I can drag this idea within that column. And then if I wanted to, I could hide it. So that works really well for just hiding text, hiding ideas, if you don't wanna see all of this text right at once. So now we have all four of these set to toggle headings and I can hide all of this information. And if they're all hidden at once, it'll conform down to this new section and I could make this a heading one. You can also create headings just by typing slash H1, hit enter if you want a heading one or slash H2. That's just a quick way to create headings. All this text is making it hard to find out what's actually important. Reading a lot of information can get confusing. So tip number five is to use callouts to both give warnings or to just add side notes within your main note. Let me show you what I mean. To create a callout, we would just go to a new line and hit the slash button and then type call out, hit enter. And as you can see, it spans this call out all the way across the page. And that's because we're in this new section. So if I wanted to, I could drag it under or above our columns, right? So, you know, I could put it here and I could click into here. And if there's something that I want to warn a user about, I might put this alarm and then change the color to red background color. And then I'd type something out like, Warning, make sure to read all of this text. And then I could even make this text red as well. And now I have a nice warning in my text that stands out. Now, if I go down here to column B, hit enter and do a call out once again, I could add something like a paper clip and I could make this gray and then I could type out a note here that's a little bit less important. So this just shows up a little bit less. And then I could highlight this and I could turn the text gray. So now this isn't going to show up nearly as much as this red one here. And if I wanted to make something even less important, then I would just type my side note out in text 
and then I would make that gray and you could make it italic if you wanted to and that makes it show up even less so we have a spectrum between like red and gray and you can try out all of these different colors and use them for different things just like you would with the highlighter I also think that like blue callouts look pretty cool so maybe the blue callouts you would just use for like a fun fact or something like that so bottom line is use these callouts to highlight important information if you want to get rid of these emojis in here, all you would have to do is highlight this text, change the callout to text. And this is kind of just a little workaround to keep the callout uh, or to keep that background, but to not have to keep that emoji in there. Tip number six is to create a hierarchy within your notes using bullet lists or numbered lists. To do this, just hit enter to a new line and hit the dash button and then hit space and that will start up your list. So I can start typing out item one, I can hit enter item two, and if I wanted to, I could hit enter and then hit tab and that would go in one. And then if I hit enter again, it'll keep me in that. But if I wanted to go back, I would just hit backspace, backspace again, and then I could start typing my list again. Now I could also go in one more by hitting tab and it will create this square so I can go in as many as I want just by hitting tab and enter now I could also highlight this click on the side and turn into numbered list and as you can see it's going to turn those top two items into numbers and if I continue from here it will keep the number theme going if I hit tab it will actually change it to A for the first one and then B or if I tab in again it'll change it to I and another tab would start over with the numbers again. Tip number seven is to create a table of contents in Notion and the cool thing about this is Notion's going to do most of the work for you. You just have to add one simple block and it will create an entire table of contents that's actually hyperlinked to different parts of your notes. So you can click on one of the links, it'll take you to a part of your note. This is super quick and it'll upgrade your notes a lot. So let's get into it. So as you can see here, I have a note on tax liens and tax deeds, real estate auctions. And I took this note about, well, in 2020, so about two years ago. And I was looking at tax foreclosure land because I was looking to buy some land and I actually got a really good deal this worked out really well, so this note came in pretty handy. Now, you also see over here that we have these links, and this is a special type of block in Notion called a table of contents block. So if I click on this, it's actually going to highlight whatever header I click on, and it will pull me to it. So if I click on this one at the bottom, delinquent tax list, it'll pull me all the way down to that entire section. And if I want to add on to this, all I have to do is click into the section where I want to add a new header, type slash H2 for instance, and hit enter, and then give it a name. And as you can see, it adds it right to this table of contents for me. To create this table of contents, all you have to do is hit slash and type table of contents, hit enter, and it will generate one for you. You can drag that anywhere you want it. Notion is a great tool for putting text down, but it's not great for diagramming different systems or expressing an idea from an image or drawing something. So what I like to do is I like to use a tool alongside Notion called Miro. And this tool allows you to both use your iPad to draw things or to just create diagrams within your computer. So let me show you what that looks like and how to add those into Notion in a flash. So this note here has this nice diagram that shows a timeline and I didn't create this particular image in Miro, but you could create something like this very simply. So all you would have to do is open up Miro in a separate window. You can make it full screen if you want. I am just keeping up both Notion and Miro for the sake of this tutorial, but you're going to create a frame just by clicking this button and you can give it a name. So the name would be prime opportunity and all i would have to do to create this timeline here is just grab a few shapes so let's just grab a few rectangles and draw this out i'm going to draw that one first and we'll make it green on the inside and there's already a black border around it and let's just command c command v to paste that and i can make as many of these as i want so let's make a yellow one now 
man v again i can make my frame a bit bigger if we're getting to the point where we're getting out of the size of it and i could paste my final part of the timeline here we could make that red and now we have a very similar timeline and i could connect ideas to this just by using the line connector tool and i could grab some text here Now I'm going to add a small black box right here to signify the foreclosure event like they have there. Next, let's just add the rest of this text and then we could drag a line like they have right here. So I could just do that and we could change the type of it to make it a little bit bolder and I could make those, I could add those dots on both sides of it, like so. And we could add some big text in here, prime opportunity. So in my case, I just pulled this right off of a blog and threw it in my notes, but if I didn't have that particular uh, diagram that I could pull in, I could make my own using Miro like this. And then once I have this made within this frame, I can click more and I can export as image. Then I export it as whatever sized image I want or I can do a PDF and let's just export it as medium and I'm gonna save it as prime opportunity, hit save and that's going to download. Now, once this downloads, all I have to do is drag it right into Notion. Now, I think theirs turned out really good, but if I didn't have this particular diagram to lean on for my notes, I could create my own using Miro. Tip number nine is to use Notion's Web Clipper tool to pull text from anywhere on the internet. So you'll have to be using Google Chrome for this or a Chromium browser, but to do this, all you have to do is install the Notion Web Clipper tool and it shows up up here as a little notion icon and if you click on it as you can see it opens up asking you to name this page and it asks you which database you want to add it to within which workspace let's just click on this one right here and if i scroll through this as you can see it's got a tweet in it it's got some other information so let's see how this does when capturing this info so if i click up here it will pull the title and it'll make that the title of the page and it asks where do I want to add this to so let's just say I want to add it to my links I get it save page and then open in notion and as you can see it pulls it in and it also creates these quotes for those tweets I could then go in here and edit all of this information or I could copy specific parts of it or I could even use the links that are still here. So if I click on that, it'll bring me to the actual tweet. Tip number 10 is to create your own notes database. So this is my notes database and I have lots of different tags and types for all of these notes in here. As you can see, different words to describe them and search them by. And we have just tons of notes in here that I have gathered over a long period of time, both from meetings with particular people in my industry, as well as maybe some of these notes are based on lectures that I've listened to or YouTube videos that I've listened to. There's a whole lot of notes in here and they can be sorted out quite easily just by hitting the sort button and created by descending is what they're sorted by right now, which really does nothing. But if I wanted to, I could sort them by note type or something like that. And now I have all of my procedures here I have all my references, ideas, meeting notes, video plans, learning notes, introspective notes, things that I've come up with out of my own mind or based on another idea, but an original idea from me. And to take this a step further, I can even hit group and I can group by note type. And as you can see here, I have all of my note types and I can open them up and just see my introspective notes or I can open up just my learning notes here. And I could also group by related people because I like to relate my notes to different people. So now I can see which notes don't have related people associated with them. So if I have a bunch in here, I can organize those a bit better. But I can also just click into these specific people and I can learn about whatever it is that they teach. So I've got a lot under me. Um, 
but let's just look at like persuasion tips by Charlie Hooper. So he's a YouTuber uh, that runs a channel called Charisma on Command. So if I click into here, you'll see that I have Charlie Hooper related people. And it's just a note based on something that he taught. And then we have this source to that video. I hope you've enjoyed these 10 tips. If you want to learn how to build the notes database that I just showed you, check out that video right here. That should help out a ton. It's a pretty quick video, it gets to the point, and it'll show you how to build that database that I just now showcased to you guys. All right.